Hi, my name is Patrick Ward and I'm from Tampa, Florida in the US and this is my week six assignment for the Introduction to Music Production course. Today I'm going to talk about the amplitude envelope and provide some examples of commonly used envelope patterns. Let's start by discussing the amplifier and how it uses the amplitude envelope. Synthesizers like this RetroSynth use a voltage controlled amplifier or VCA. Uh, the VCA is modulated over time by an envelope, but what exactly is an envelope? It's really quite simple. It's really just a, a set path that the synthesizer's amplifier creates each time a key is, is uh, pressed. And this changes the character of the sound emanating from the synthesizer and can be used to dramatically change how that sound reacts over time. And the envelope, amplitude envelope is generally managed by four related controls. Attack time is how long it takes for a sound to reach its maximum amplitude when a key is pressed, that is from zero to that set maximum amplitude. Decay time is how long it takes for a sound to go from the max amplitude down to a sustained level. And that sustained level then is the level at which a sound is maintained while a key is pressed. And finally, the release time is how long it takes to go from that sustained level down to a zero amplitude after the key is released. So now that we know what the envelope is and how its key components affect sound, let's explore some of the common patterns and find out how they could be used within a piece of music. I'll play a simple drum track and, a, and, a, and a, the same melody over each of these patterns so that we can hear they, how they affect the, the sounds. Let's start with a switch pattern, which provides no attack time, no release time, and a full sustain level. We'll bring this attack over here. Since the sustain level is all the way up, the decay really doesn't matter. And as you can hear, it gives sort of an organ sound. There's an immediate on and off, and it, it doesn't allow for any decay or release time. The next pattern we'll take a look at is the damped percussive pattern. And the damped percussive pattern uh, uses no attack time and no release time, just like the switch pattern. But unlike the switch pattern, it does use a little decay time. And it brings the uh, sustain level all the way down. So as you can hear in those long notes, the note decays rapidly. Now you can add a little bit of release time to a percussive just to allow those keys to ring out a little bit afterwards once they're released. And it's still considered a, a damp percussive. If you want a true percussive sound, however, you're going to need to match the decay with the release time so that when the keys are released, they're allowed to complete the envelope and you want to match it just about the same, or thereabouts. And you can hear a small difference now. You hear in those, in those rapid keystrokes, you can hear how the release time is allowed to complete the sound all the way down to an amplitude of zero. The next pattern we'll take a look at is the sustaining pattern, and it's a little bit more like a blown or a bowed instrument, such as a trumpet or a violin. And it uses some attack time, a little bit of uh, sustain or, or moderate to generous amount of sustain, and a little bit of uh, release time. So as you can hear, you can hear that. It, it's not a whole lot of attack. and not a whole lot of release, but you can hear the, the, the definite character change in the sounds. And then finally, we'll take a look at an, a not very often used pattern, but one that has an interesting side effect. This is the quirk mode. And the quirk mode is very much like the uh, damp percussive in that it has no attack and no sustain, but it has a very small decay and a rather large release. And if you listen to the longer notes here, you'll hear how it decays down, uh, and it sounds just like, a, like a, a damp percussive. But on the rapidly played keys, you can hear how the release is allowed to ring through, and it creates sort of that echo in the background. You 
hear that that extra release in the end. You can even hear it ringing after it's done. So those are some of the uh, most common patterns that can be used within the amplitude envelope. I hope this was useful and informative for you. Thank you for listening.